Dzień dobry, ja jestem Zdan. Oglądacie What the Fast Podcast i czas na wywiad ze Smolder. Alrighty then. First things first. Many people, when they think of Smolder, think of the covers of your album. So, What is with Michael Whelan that makes you go for him time and again? Uh, well, I mean, when I got into heavy metal, when I was, you know, 13 years old. Oh, yeah. The reason why I got into it was because I went into a CD store and I picked up a cover and I thought, whatever this is, I don't know anything about it, but it looks amazing. And that's what I want people to do when they find Smolder. I want them to pick up a record and look at it and be like, I know this is great because the cover art is great, you know? And so obviously, you know, we write about female characters basically murdering a lot of men <laughs> and other various people. And I think Michael Whelan has just like a very strong presence, great color palette, all these things. And because I'm a huge fan of sci-fi, fantasy, pulp fiction, sword and sorcery stuff, yeah. got into Michael Whelan, you know, being like, oh, wow, this book looks amazing. I'm going to read it because it looks amazing. And so, you know, when we started looking at um, what are we going to do for an album cover, it just, when I found The Well of Shuen, that was the cover of the first album, I, when I, as soon as I, I opened like the book, I was just like, oh my God, this is the album cover. Like it looks like just a fucking thunder sword. It's basically a Man of War album cover, yep, you man. know, brought to yep. life. Like it's got that power and you know, like good heavy metal albums have classic iconic art. It's Ken Kelly, but not Ken Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Yeah. It's Ken Kelly and it's Boris Vallejo yep. and it's, um, uh, you know, like Frank Frazetta yep. and it's that universe. So that's yep. the universe that I grew up with. That's the universe that I'm inspired by. So when we got the first album cover, we couldn't believe how generous he was with us. And so when we decided, okay, what are we going to do for the EP or whatever? We realized like, how do you follow up Michael Whelan with anyone? With more Michael Whelan. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Sirith Ungle did, yep. you know? And other bands have used Michael Whelan, but not used him throughout their covers. Uh, obviously, there's Demolition Hammer and there's, uh, you know, Sepultura and yep. that stuff. But, like, we really liked that Sirith Ungle had that continuity in their covers. Uh, very much so. Exactly. And we want that it's same Elric. continuity. It's just Elric. Exactly. All, all Eric, all the way. Yeah, exactly. But when you have a continuity in theme and visual presentation, I think that it propels your band that much further. It helps the promotion. Absolutely. Yeah. It helps the merch, helps the promotion, it helps yeah. the visual image because uh, you can have the music, but there's always a visual component to heavy metal. Always. Absolutely. And always, there always and, was. And that's what brought us all to heavy metal, I think, when we were younger, is that we saw those iconic images and we were like, that's powerful. And I want to participate in that. You know? To me, it was like this. <laughs> It's Dungeons and Dragons, but in music form. Yeah. Or it's comic books, but in music form. Absolutely. Uh, do you remember that first record that you picked up when you were 13? Yeah, it was... What, what was that? It was definitely Iron Maiden. It was Brave oh, New World. The album, Brave New World? Yeah, the week it came out, I went oh, to the... Yeah. And it's funny because one of my friends at the time, I was in junior high and I was reading the book, Brave New World. Yep. And one of my friends came over and he was like, oh, this band... They just made an album about that book. And at the time, that was my absolute favorite book. And I was like, oh, and we listened to it. And I thought, holy shit. And it was, it was so brand new for me because before that, I didn't have, you know, I don't have like the dad who got me into heavy metal the way that a lot of people did. Yep. Like my, my parents liked 80s music and got me into, you know, Pink Floyd and those types and of stuff things. Like that. But yeah. not heavy metal. And so that when my friend brought over that CD, I was just like, this is incredible. Now I'm going to go to the record store. And then that meant buying a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> All right, then. You said Maiden. Then let's go with Maiden. Paul, Bruce, or Blaze, and, and who and why? I mean, that's a hard one. I, I, I probably shouldn't say it, but Paul. That's the right answer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I think Killers, for me, is, like, such an iconic, important... And I kind of yes. like the more punk-infused yes, Iron Maiden. street metal. Yeah, and so I really love that. But that's not to say, like, in terms of quantity of quality, 
then Bruce obviously wins. Yeah. Yeah. Like Seventh obviously. Son of a Seventh Son is like an effing masterpiece, but it's also a different feel. Then what's your take on Blaze then? Um. <laughs> oh, I, I, I need to hear this. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan. Um, of him in Maiden or him in general? Um, either. Oh, yeah. It's just I not, it. I'm just not, a, I'm not hugely attracted to like the way that he sings. I gotcha, I gotcha. You. you know, like respect him because obviously, you know, thanks he for the- He is a good singer. Yeah, exactly. But it just, it didn't do for me like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, no jitters. No yeah, jitters, no nothing. Exactly. I you get listen it. to a band and you're like, Whoa. absolutely get it. <laughs> Okay. So now <laughs> let's go into some deeper stuff <laughs> in the- okay. Uh, the songs themselves. We know when we see the cover, then we have the sword woman, but who is the sword woman and is it you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be, but yeah. I think it's just an archetypal character that I was always attracted to. Red Sonia? <laughs> Something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, Dark Agnes. Oh, yeah. Not Red Sonia, but Dark Agnes, because Dark Agnes is the archetype for Red Sonia. Very much so. And Dark Agnes, for me, like, that to me felt like the very first time that I saw a character as an adult that I was like, yes, this is, you know, like, it, very empowering. Because yeah. growing up, I was a huge book nerd. I loved reading. I read every single book that I could. And the ones that I loved the most were the ones with strong women in them. You know, Island of the Blue Dolphins. Yeah. Hmm. Like Island of the Blue Dolphins, you know, very young, I'm loving Harry Potter, like when I'm in grade two. You know, there's all these things coming out where I was like, oh, people who go on adventures, yep. girls who go on adventures. Yep. And that's always been who I am as a person. Like I'm, you know, the archetypal like tomboy. I like, you know, I'm the one who jumps off the building and does it first and breaks Perfectly. my leg and is an idiot. Um, but yeah, those characters, um, for me, the ones that always really empowered me, it's like Xena, you know, oh, Xena yeah. warrior princess, Buffy the vampire slayer. You know, like these characters, like badass women who do shit for themselves. They don't fucking need men to do things for it's, them. It's good at, <laughs> you know? it's good at it's Xena and not fucking Hercules who turned out to be a fucking <laughs> stupid mother, motherfucking <laughs> bullshit artist. <laughs> That's my that's my take on Kevin Sorbo. It's funny because there actually is this really amazing um, movie that Kevin Sorbo played in called Call the, Call Conqueror. the Conqueror. And I think it's like one of the best sword and sorcery films of all time. And Tia Carrere is this fire witch. It's I, so I saw cool. This. I saw and like this. nobody, yeah, but next to no one has seen this yeah, movie. But fuck him. And it is a fantastic movie. Yeah, but fuck him. I don't know that much about him, to be honest. He, just, turned, out, he turned out to be a Christian. Fuck what? So mm. fuck him. Okay. <laughs> that's my that's my take on Kevin Sorbo. Fuck you, Kevin Sorbo. Uh, <laughs> let's go back All right. into metal. Spicy. <laughs> oh, let's go back into metal. I will ask something about music because we're talking about music. Because I'm in a band. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Possibly. Uh, maybe. Possibly we're talking about some music. I think <laughs> sometimes uh, the take is this. Uh, to me. There are many, or or there are bands with female vocals now with with the new wave that take it in a speed metal fashion. Like yep. some some of the Savage Master stuff is speedy, and we have Solicitor, but Smolder turn it on its head. So why? What is like your attraction to what I hear sometimes in your stuff? To Candle Mass, to Trouble, to like Solitude Eternus, like to Doom. Solitude Eternus, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that the history and the intertwining of speed metal, power metal, and doom metal has been like from a from a clinical and like metal history archival yep. perspective, I think those genres have been separated too much. Because the fact of the matter is, is that if you look at a genre like US power metal, yep. that's speed metal, that's my it's thing. doom that's metal. My thing. And it's power metal. And like, that's what Smolder encompasses is like that style. Well. And it, for me, like, I think that because there's so many commonalities in those music, like if you listen to an album like Scanner's Hypertrace, yep. like that's the kind of album that I want to write. That's the kind of music I want to write because yeah, that's something where it's like, you know, there's, there's multiple genres in there, but they all flow seamlessly. But you know? see, uh, <laughs> if you want to write Hypertrace, you still come out and smolder much to do me on Hypertrace <laughs> uh, compared to Hypertrace. 
Well, that's because, you know, I love Reverend Bazaar. Oh, and like that's my doom over the world. Yeah, like my 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 history, like when I was a teenager and really diving into like extreme underground heavy metal, yeah. one of the first genres that I really love after porno grind, that was a really <laughs> short phase. Uh, really like really, that when I was does 15. Does somebody really like that? <laughs> oh yeah. When oh, you're fuck. 15 and you're edgy. Yeah. Yeah. When that's that's in, what you like when you're when 15. When I was 15 and it was edgy, I listened to The Cure. Come on. <laughs> oh. I, was, I listened to Rumpelstiltskin uh, Grinder, so I don't know what to I like, tell you. I, I like that too. <laughs> but, I know what you're talking you know, about. I, like, I, lo I love Doom, and I've always loved Doom. And the reason why I love Doom is because generally it's a genre, it's like sad music for ugly people. Kind of. You know? Like, That's why you, I like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but sang and created by like weirdos who have yep. strange warbling voices. Like, look at, look at Wino. <laughs> he, he's a motherfucking... Out there, but guy. I mean, ugly isn't meant to be like. Uh, yeah, I know. It's no, not meant to be a takedown of how someone looks. It's more just like the the strange people who don't feel like they fit the in. The misfits. Yeah, exactly. The and outcasts. like Saint Vitus really summed that up in yep. the phrase "born, born too late, late." You know, it's like doom metal for me. It always felt very early on like a very inclusive, sad, weird, kind romantic of kind of place. And that really, for someone who was really into writing and was picked on a lot as a kid and like went through a lot of, you know, things in my life, like that really resonated with me. Oh, Having yeah. like this beautiful, romantic, ugly, sad, weird music that, you know, yeah, I could get it. be But emotional for me. <laughs> would, you say, would you say, because I picked up on what you said, like on the <laughs> crossroads of doom metal and US power metal, which is my thing. Yeah. And like speed metal. Yeah. There's, to me, what comes to my mind is Trouble. Yeah. The first Trouble album and the first song that can be doomy, but it also can be power metal -y and speed metal -y at the same time. Yep. Yeah, so it, it, that's, it, that's, it, that's, that, that's what you're aiming for, right? That's, yeah. Okay, so I basically got it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the idea. More or less. <laughs> so, perfect, perfect. And I love Trouble, so. <laughs> yeah. If somebody doesn't like Trouble, fuck them. Uh, <laughs> All right. Right on. So there's also one more thing. What's that? Apart from playing, you review stuff like we do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we try to, at least. Yeah. Uh, does it come in conflict, like playing and reviewing at the same time? Because like us, sometimes friends call you and review my shit. Yeah. And it's like, for us, it's like, well, Not really, <laughs> not really, because if you review it well, you're kissing up. And if you review it not well, you're on purpose fucking them up because you don't want to see my kisses. Like, that's my take on it. But what's, what's <laughs> what? Because, of course, you are a, like, on a bigger child than it. We are, we are small fuckers. But did you have any issues, like, with, with friends going over? With I mean, of, of course. Like, I've been writing about heavy metal now for 20 years. And I've done it for dozens of publications. And of yep. course, of course, people are like, oh, like, I want to send you things for free and then you'll say nice things. I'm like, that's not how it works. Nope. And, and I mean, the integral part of like working in heavy metal and being a heavy, heavy metal musician yep. is having integrity you and saying to people, you know, like, for example, like if I guested on, a, on an album, yep. I can never review that band again. Yep. And let's say, you know, a musician guested on one of our albums. I couldn't review their albums yep. ever again. So it's things like that. Like, I tend to be very, um, I try to be as gentle as I can with people, but I don't like most things. I think, <laughs> I think, I think most snobs don't like most things. Uh, and, well, you know, like, that's the thing. It's like, I don't like most albums, but the ones that I do, like, I'll absolutely go to bat for. And if somebody says to me, will you review my album? And I'm not into it. I'll say something along the lines of like, this isn't for me, but I do have some colleagues you might be able to speak oh, to. Yeah. But, you know, of, co of course there's conflicts of interest and you just do your best to be transparent about it. So, so that's different to me because if I review something and they send me something, yeah. I'm asking them, do you really want me to review this? Yeah. Because they know me and I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to bat. If it's not good, <laughs> you're fucked. Yeah. Because I'm going to, if it's not good, and you wasted my time, I'm gonna <laughs> fuck you because there's too much music to waste time on bad music. Well, I don't know. I mean, 
There's a shit lot I, of good stuff. Even if, there is. even if you sift through the whole, whole of the fucking bullshit that's coming out and it's a shit lot of metal now is you can go all yeah. over the place. But it's still too much to even listen to on the even the mediocre good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there is that, but there's also the fact that to me, a good writer will try to understand music even if they don't necessarily enjoy it. Very and true. there's a lot of musicians out there that I know intrinsically are talented and I know they're making good records, yep. but it doesn't mean I will ever listen to their record ever again. So I try to be clear about that and I try to actually avoid listening to anything that I know I won't. That's give my, a fair shake to because I think that the problem is is like a lot of music journalists they replace critical analysis with being caustic yeah. or being like bitchy and yeah. I'm like yeah obviously you can have a personality if you're a media personality you should have a personality you should but simultaneously I don't think it's necessarily fair to the artist that you're reviewing if you rely too much on the personality to then shit Very on them true. when they make good art, it's just not good art that good for you art, you know? Yeah, so that's, I, I had this take <laughs> and my take was this. Uh, somebody wanted to send me some, a technical trash record and I could Sick. review it when I was younger, <laughs> but now I'm done with this. If you're not coroner, I don't care. What if you're Watchtower or Mekong Delta? Oh, well, I didn't. <laughs> I watched Mekong Girl for once, live, and it was the most boring shit I've saw ever. <laughs> okay. So if you're Watchtower and you're, if you're Watchtower and you're Connor, I will give you the time of the day. Okay. And if you're toxic, I will give you the time of the day. If you're not, I have no time and no <laughs> patience, but, but I'm transparent to those people. Yeah. And I tell them, just don't send me this yeah. because I don't even have it in me now to see it even it's not going to be objective because it's never objective. A review is not objective, but it's not even semi. I will not even try because it bores me to death. So That's fair. that would be my take on it. Yeah. And, and it's kind of similar to your take. Then you say to people, well, this is not for me. Yeah. Send it to somebody else. Yeah. Or I'm too busy. To or I'm too on. busy. Or just, I don't have time. Or I have something recorded or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes you do have to say that to people. It doesn't yeah. necessarily feel great. But you also have finite time on this yep. earth and you don't need to spend it all no time for appeasing music. other people. Yep. <laughs> There's no time job. for music you don't like. <laughs> Interest, interestingly, so for example, <laughs> if somebody sells metal punk, I will listen to any metal punk they send me. But if they send me death to metal with uh, like male growls and female uh, high operatic vocals, no, fuck. You're, you're <laughs> fucked even if you start. Hmm. Okay. So that would be my take on it. But, but, That's fair. But I always, uh, uh, so transparency, I would say, and integrity would be key. All righty then. <laughs> so Canada. Yeah. Uh, we don't live there anymore. I know, but yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that, that, it's not where well, you live there, but Voivod or Razor and why? Voivod. And why? <laughs> Because, and that's the right answer, but why? Because Dimension Hatros is a fucking masterpiece and True. one of my favorite albums of all time. And I know every single note. And the thing that I respect the most about Voivod was that they are artists and they've always been artists. And they've been the kind of artists that like transcend, I think, they don't care. I honestly don't think that they care about what their fans think. They want to make art and try things for their own sakes because they're artists. And, you know, when you read about the history of what Voivod has done, it's so interesting. Like, they spent periods where they were all living in the same apartment, yep. rehearsing every single night for, like, six months straight, and then going to Berlin to record Dimension Hatros with, like... And, you know, I hear about things like that, and when I hear that album, which is so weird and strange and, and a little scary and off-kilter, and Michael Langvin, bless his heart... If I wasn't married, I would marry Michael Langevin because that guy is so fucking talented. He's such an amazing drummer and such an amazing um, artist, like multimedia artist. Oh, uh, visual you know? art. Oh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he makes such cool good. stuff. And it's so, it's so like discombobulating, it's, you know? It's weird. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's Lovecraftian. It's, it's out there. Yeah, it's out of this it's world. It's mechanic and Lovecraftian yeah. at the same time. And also Voivod Live is incredible. Also I mean, once. Absolutely astounding. So I've seen them 
I think 11 times oh, now because um, I'm Canadian and I've traveled a lot for shows. And I remember very clearly that once they, so I used to live in a, uh, this city and they had come through the city on a tour with a couple yeah. of other bands. And then like four months later or five months later, they came through again. And the previous show had been a Saturday night. So, you know, everybody oh, yeah. was there and they were playing, you know, with whatever popular death metal band that was big at the time. And then they came again through the same city yeah. on a Wednesday night. Holy and nobody showed up <laughs> there was like 25 people and that i was, was show and, for 25 exactly people. it's, it's fuck bullshit us. i don't know people are crazy i don't know why they didn't come but they played the exact level of t intensity that i had seen them play for the sold out saturday night show that i had seen them play at maryland death fest and because the 25 of us were going berserk they gave everything and i was just like like that to me is artistry like that's that's appreciating the people who show up and that's like performing your hearts out because yep. that's what you do. That reminded me of what I call the Night Demon Factor. <laughs> Night Demon once came here before the first show of Manila Road here and they played for 50 people. Yep. And they played like they played for 5,000 people. Yeah. So that's... That, yeah, that's, I mean, the, the those guys are road warriors. Yes, you they know? are. And like... I never saw a bad show from them. Exactly. once. They, they work very hard and like Jarvis, you know, he's done, I think, a lot to help yep. revive traditional heavy metal. Very much so. Um, and yeah, nothing but respect for those guys because, you know, you can see it when you see them live. Yep. Like they just, they nail it and it's like, uh, nice. Even, even <laughs> on a festival, even on a small venue everywhere, yeah. it's going to be fucking perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that, they're, they're the guys. They're the guys to, well, live, they're the guys to follow, as I say. Yeah. All righty then. A couple of more music stuff. Chastain, yay or, yay or nay? Sorry, who? Letter, letter Leone, Chastain. Le oh, I love Chastain. Great. Fucking perfect. Sword metalized, yay or nay? Mmm. Yay. Good. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Messiah Force, yay or nay? Oh, absolutely. They're playing Keep It True. Th they're, they're reform. I didn't know. And this. I was like, pardon me, because so I've got a very large record collection and like, yeah. The last day, I've got both the Canadian press cover and the German press oh, yeah. cover because there's both. different cover yeah, art. I um, and I really love that record a lot. Yeah. Astounding record. Astounding yes. speed metal record. Yeah, one of the best yep. Canadian bands, I think, Very in much history. So. <laughs> Next to, well. No, no, Anvil is me. I just like Anvil. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right, then. If you had to cover. A band, a U.S. power metal band. Which one? What song? And why? Fuck. <laughs> I would need cover. To be female no, I would cover Omen, um, and I think I would cover Prince of Darkness because we've talked about doing that and we've thought about doing changing the it, so it's Princess of Darkness. Perfect. Because like Omen's. See? Like the fact that more people don't compare Smolder to Omen annoys the shit out of me, to be perfectly honest, because it's you know such why? an obvious. You're not as speedy as Omen. Yes and no. Maybe. You know, like I, I think that there's so, so many obvious commonalities, but kind of. because I'm a woman, people are like, no, oh, it's actually something completely different. And it's you like, don't it's sound not. like Jackie Kimball. <laughs> yeah, fuck exactly. Off. Why aren't you, mm, why are you singing about a. <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> but. It's funny, Canadians and Omen are friends from Gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. They did Omen. They yep. did, what is it, Death Rider? Death Rider. I, I don't know what's what Canadians and Omen, but Omen, perfection, perfect choice. <laughs> we all, we're the fucking Omen fox. <laughs> go, go mental for Omen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first record is, to me, the first Omen record is the only thing comparable to the first Metal Church record and the first Jack Panther record. Hmm. Those are the three. When, if somebody asked me about US Power Metal, I would say this and you're, you're good. You can go on, but this is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, this is like the... the have fun. The, the, have this fun is children. 101. <laughs> yeah, have fun children. <laughs> yeah. And then Vicious Rumors and lots of bullshit. I mean, there's lots of things to follow yep. up with that, but yes. <laughs> yep. Okay, okay. There's two new songs out of the new record. Yep. Uh, I do bo like both, 
but tell us something more. Get us into the new record, into the vibe. Tell us something about the songs you haven't heard. The floor is yours. The new record. Sorry, you want me to talk about the other... The new record, the other the songs new... that we haven't heard. Okay. Um, they're heavier, it... they're more progressive. There's more, I think, infusion of like Fate's Warning, especially like the first Ooh. like two, three albums. Um, there's more speed metal and there's more oh, US yes. power metal. Oh, yes. So there's like three tracks that I think like are a lot like Bastard Steel on the first album. Um, very like US power metal, speed metal inspired. Um, and there's also more very long, heavy songs songs and I'm actually really stoked in particular um, about Midnight in the Mirror World which we're playing tonight which is um, based on like a Fritz Lieber uh, book that, yes. or short story that's it's it's very weird it's like the most Candlemassian like Solitude Eternus kind of song that we've Do ever it. written All right. um, and uh, so I'm thrilled on that one but the other one I'm really stoked about which I don't know when we're going to play live but I really hope it's soon is the closing track which is called Dragon Slayer's Doom and that one's I think our most Reverend Bizarre song ever um, and it's about a warrior who goes to kill a dragon and the dragon ends up burning her alive sword and sorcery <laughs> yummy but it's also you know an ode to Dio because oh, like okay. I think killing, killing the dragon exactly but I think that that's one of the things about doom metal you know it's like the power metal is all about fighting and killing the dragon and doom metal is about being killed by the dragon like Maybe. <laughs> You know, Maybe. like, but metal, it's, it's metal church was about everything. Yes, but you don't hear a lot of songs about being defeated by the True. dragon. Do you know what I mean? Very much. And not only that, but it's such a doom kind of like mainstay to have yeah. a song that has the word doom in it. Should be, yeah. Doom so over the world, yeah. All, all, all of that. Yeah. Very much so. Epic is doom because metallic uh, is like you know you put that's you the, put the word into it and like so for me that one's really great because we also have solos from all five of us which oh, is pretty cool really yeah it's a 10 minute long song so, so uh, like a uh, long closer song yes i mean yeah. we had that on the first album too yeah, with black god's kiss so. so again the same the same pattern uh similar but there's more there's more speed and there's more power there's more so speed. yeah cool and, and more aggression my thing, my thing. yeah <laughs> my thing all right yeah when will we, when will it be out april uh, 21st April 21st. Yeah. So, and on, like, in Europe and in the US, everywhere. Yes, worldwide. Cruise Dressel Records? Yes. Yeah. Very much so. All righty then. That was the last one. The floor is yours. Whatever you have, want to say to our viewers and to Polish fans <laughs> and or to anybody who will watch this godforsaken piece of media <laughs> with me in it, and it, I shouldn't be in it, but I'm in, but I'm in it. The floor is yours. <laughs> Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, you. You can check us out at smolder.bandcamp.com. Um, and yeah, we're really excited to play Poland tonight. This is really cool. We've never been to Warsaw before and spent a couple hours walking around the city this morning and going to the parks and it was gorgeous. So, yeah. How do you like Poland then? It's beautiful. Some people don't say so, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it seems like there's a lot of civil unrest. There's a shitload of civil unrest? Yeah. Mainly because uh, there's still the fucking Catholic Church that has a, a million souls and they still say what, ca what you can do and cannot do for many people. Yes, it seems that so way. That's the unrest because there's the older generation that still listens to this. Yeah. And there's the, like, younger. I'm not younger, but there's the, well, younger than them that says... Fuck those fucking churchmen, burn them all. So that's the civil unrest. That's the yeah. That's the thing here. Yeah, I would say for me. At least. Yeah, it's palatable for sure. Yeah. Um, but so far, everyone here has been really nice. wonderful to us, and we're really stoked to get to play. <laughs> so then, this was the interview. We were what the first podcast. This was Sarah from Smolder. Thank you. See you later. <laughs>